So time to talk about uh, cake filtration. Uh, and there are actually three different kinds of filtration. Depth filtration, where uh, material is catched inside a material. And this uh, is, for example, the case in a kitchen fan, typically, uh, in a HEPA filter, in a vacuum cleaner, and various other stuff. There is blocking filtration, uh, where you remove small amounts of some stuff. The problem with blocking filtration is that uh, you have particles uh, that you want to remove and when it sticks to the filter it blocks uh, a flow channel so uh, for every particle you catch you have a harder and harder time to get anything through so you can only remove small amounts and the thing we're going to concentrate on this course is cake filtration and here the the filter is just to support and actually, in the beginning, it might do a rather poor job because some of the small particles might, might actually pass through. Uh, so we want the filter as a support uh, to build up a cake. And the cake, this thing here, uh, that's what uh, m actually makes the filtration effective, taking away the particles. So you might actually want to first try to build up a cake uh, and when the things that pass through here, you might want to put back again until you get um, a cake that's more stable and can catch the small particles. Uh, so, uh, how to do mass balances for cake filtration? Uh, what about the liquid volume that comes in and goes out? Can you make a mass balance for that? And what about the build up of mass here? Can you make a mass balance of that? Pause here and try to figure out equations you could use for these two mass balances. Okay, uh, so let's look at this. For the liquid or the gas, if it's a gas filtration, you have a volume coming in and the volume going out is almost the same as the volume coming in, but not quite. Because uh, this material here, the cake, it's porous. So some of the gas or liquid will actually be left in the cake. Uh, and how much? Well, that's the porosity of the cake times the volume of the cake. That's how much void volume there, in, there is in there. And that void volume can be filled with this liquid or gas. What about the particles? Well, if you have a concentration of particles C and a volume that you want to filtrate, then V times C is uh, the amount of particles you have. Uh, preferably, you don't want any particles to pass through. So let's assume that that's zero. Otherwise, you have to have a C out concentration here times uh, V out. And What's, accumul uh, what's accumulated is the mass uh, of the dry weight of the cake. Now, so if C here is in gram per liter and V is in liter, then this is in grams, right? And if you have other units, you have to well, adjust. Things to reflect on. Is this volume here, uh, the porosity times the V cake, is that negligible in relation to V alt? I mean, if you if you filtrate uh, 10 cubic meters and then EV cake, if that is small, let's say it's it's half a liter or something, then perhaps you don't need to take that into account. Uh, another thing is that I already mentioned, is the concentration in the outlet really zero? Perhaps not. And then if it's not, you need to adjust here. And the problem is that the concentration might actually vary as the filtration goes on. You're going to use an equation for cake filtration and let's try to derive that step by step. Uh, you have actually two porous media here. You have the filter and you have the cake. So the pressure difference is the pressure difference over the cake plus the pressure difference over the filter. And you might remember Darcy's law, V equals K times delta P divided by mu L. 
and uh, well the velocity is one divided by the area dv dt uh, so dv dt uh, is the derivative of the volume that has passed through uh, which means that we can write the delta p cake as mu l divided by a k dv uh, divided by dt so dv dt the next part is a bit tricky uh, but let's just uh, so this part is a bit difficult l because l m divided by the area and the density of the particle uh, and then one minus the uh, porosity what does this mean well if you think of of uh, the particles in the solution uh, think of that as solid spheres for a while they have a certain uh, density and the cake will have a certain area and the cake will have a certain porosity as well and uh, the material collected have a certain mass and the, the thickness of the cake must be related to these somehow. And if you want to, you can sit by yourself and try to figure this out. But this, this equation is correct. Uh, but if, and if we've used this equation here and put that in our earlier equation, we get this equation here. But the mass is the concentration times the volume. Uh, so we can get rid of the m there and get this equation here. So we're almost done. Now we introduce alpha, which we will call uh, the filtration resistance. And we introduce that as one divided by the density of the particle, uh, one minus uh, the porosity and then the permeability K in Darcy's law. And if we put that in, then we get the filtration equation here. Delta P cake equals the viscosity uh, times the uh, filtration resistance times the concentration times the volume divided by a squared uh, and then dv dt and the general equation we need to add uh, delta p uh, over the filter and delta p over the cake so we get this general equation for cake filtration and that's the general equation we will often use uh, cake filtration for constant transmembrane, uh, sorry, constant pressure applied and also constant filtration resistance. Uh, and if we do that, if we assume those constant, then we get this integral and you integrate this up and then you get uh, an equation that looks like this, that the time equals the viscosity times uh, the resistance of the filter uh, divided by air, the area and the pressure times the volume and then you have um, the cake part uh, viscosity times the filtration resistant concentration the volume squared and then divided by 2 a squared delta p now you uh, you can actually linearize this equation uh, and if you do that, if you take divide both sides with v, you get t divided by v equals mu rm uh, divided by area delta p plus uh, a part here that depends on v, which you can simplify and say that this is essentially a plus bv. So if you plot your results, you should expect that, that you get a linear equation if everything seems correct. And now note this outlier here. This is often the case that the first value will be a bit off. Uh, we will discuss that during the lab as well. 